In this video, we're gonna look at trait care. Remember, you should always suction the patient before trait care. So if you haven't watched that skill video yet, make sure that you watch it. Remember, as you're doing this, you want to be assessing the stoma for signs of infection or skin breakdown while you look at it. The other thing to remember is that if the patient coughs, uh, you could be exposed. So we always recommend goggles or a face shield during trait care. So the first thing you wanna do is open your sterile trait care kit and if it doesn't come with a good amount of gauze, you can also open an extra sterile four x four pack of gauze. Then you want to pour a sterile saline solution into a compartment within your tray or into the pack of gauze. So there's other supplies you might need access to, so you're gonna open those onto your sterile field inside your kit. The new dressing, the new inner cannula, uh, and the trait ties. So now if your trait ties or trait holder isn't sterile, just open it and set it next to the sterile field. So apply a pair of clean gloves. And the first thing that you wanna do for trait care is remove the inner cannula. Now, most of the time these are disposable, so this one will just get tossed. If you don't have disposable, you will have to clean it. You also wanna remove the old dressing and then remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene. Now you can grab the sterile glove pack from the kit and put on your sterile gloves. Again, go to the sterile gloves video here if you need help um, or need some review on how to put on sterile gloves. Throughout this entire procedure, you want to keep your dominant hand sterile. So uh, now that you're sterile, you can finish setting up everything inside of your kit. A lot of times there will be a sterile drape that you can use to lay over the patient's chest. Just make sure you keep your hands sterile. If you don't have a drape, you can also lay a towel over their chest before you get started as well. So the first thing we need to do is clean the secretions from the flange of the tracheostomy. So you'll use a combination of cotton tipped applicators and pipe cleaners, just depends on what uh, you have in your kit. So just remember you never insert these into the stoma itself. If needed, um, you can dip them in the saline solution and you're just gonna scrub around the flange. So depending on the patient, how long that they have had the tracheostomy, how long it's been since trait care, you might need to use three or four of these cotton tip applicators or pipe cleaners to make sure that you get all of the secretions off. Remember, all those secretions are out of the lungs. If we leave them there in that area, we're just increasing the risk for infection and skin breakdown. So. The next thing we wanna do is clean under the flange and around the stoma itself. And to do that, we're gonna use our saline soaked gauze. So pick up a piece of gauze and wring it out so that it's not dripping. And then you're actually going to feed it up underneath the flange. And if you need to, you can actually grab a, a clean a sterile cotton tipped applicator if you still have one and use that to kind of push it through. And then you're gonna bring that piece of gauze up through underneath the flange and just keep repeating that on both sides of the um, tracheostomy tube itself to make sure that you get all of that nice and clean up underneath the flange. You can also use a, a dry piece of gauze in the same manner, just tuck it up underneath and pull it out from the other side to help dry the area and dry around the stoma. Now, once you're satisfied with the cleaning, it's time to replace the inner cannula. You wanna put it in at an angle first and then follow the curvature of the cannula in order to put it into the trach and then make sure that you lock it in place. Now, if you don't have a disposable and you need to clean your inner cannula, use the brush in the kit and the saline solution. Notice we don't use hydrogen peroxide unless there's an obvious skin infection. It prevents healing. So now it's time to change the trach ties. Make sure your new ties are ready to go and within arm's reach. You always wanna keep one hand on the trach itself and start by untying one side of the existing ties. Now, if you have a Velcro tie holder like this, simply undo the Velcro and pull it out. Then you're going to insert the new ties through that one flange hole and secure it. Remember, you always keep one hand on the trach in case the patient coughs, that thing could fly right out. So once you insert the new ties on one side, you're going to slide both the new and the old ties behind the patient's head, still holding the trach with one hand. So now you've pulled the old ones out and the new ones across. 
And now you can remove the old ties from the other flange and secure the new ties to that side. The big thing here is just make sure that your ties are not twisted. Any twists in those ties can cause pressure ulcers in the back of the neck or the side of the neck. So once you've pulled the ties through, you can secure them with a knot. If you don't feel comfortable doing this yourself and having one hand on the trach, get a helper. Have somebody come in and just put their you know, two fingers on the trach for you and hold it while you do this. Once you tie these, make sure that you can still fit two fingers snugly underneath the ties. Too loose, the trach can come out. Too tight, and it can irritate the patient, make them cough, and cause pressure problems. Now the last step is you're going to carefully place the new split dressing under the flange and around the trach. Again, if you need to, you can use a tip of a cotton-tipped applicator um, just to help push it up under the flange. Either way, make sure that it's high enough to be under the flange and prevent skin breakdown. Then you will label your dressing per facility policy, discard all your supplies, and document your procedure. Easy as that, right? So the big thing to remember here is the respiratory system is sterile. So anything going into the trach or around the stoma has to be sterile. And of course, remember to keep one hand on the trach at all times when you're changing the ties. That thing will fly across the room. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.